Good morning, everybody. How's, how, how's everyone today? So do we think we have all this stuff down now that, that uh, Kurt just taught us? That we'll keep trying, right? All right, good enough. Well, um, would everyone please stand for our opening hymn? Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Please kneel for the Decalogue. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and upon us to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. <clears throat> Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. We beseech thee. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance and amendment of life and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquities of their parents to the third and the fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remembering the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Seven, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in our town. For in, this, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Be to Please join me in reading Psalm 19. The heaven declares, excuse me, the heavens declare the glory of God, and a firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. 
although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. And the deep has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a cry out of the chamber. It rejoices like a champion and runs its course. It goes forth from the outermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the edge. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and reveals the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than and honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from the secret faults. Above all, keep your servants from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of great offense. Let the word of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. A reading from Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to you who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. There is no, there is the one who is wise, there is a scribe, there is a debater of this age, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers were seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, may only your words be spoken and only your words heard. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So we're in the middle of Lent, right? Isn't Lent supposed to be a solemn season in the church calendar? It's not really meant for fun, right? It is a penitential time when devout Christians have typically given up something, uh, some earthly pleasure, right? Maybe we've given up meats or sweets or parties or television, movies. You know, the focus instead is on spiritual growth, right? Well, um, in a sermon in Rome, St. Paul at St. Paul's um, in 2012, we hear this. Every Lent, we ought to be looking at the various ways in which we get involved in manufacturing the gods that suit us. Every Lent is a time that gets that little bit further beyond the adultery that constantly keeps us prisoners and draws us back to the old world. When Jesus has cleared out the temple, when he has thrown out those people involved in manufacturing religion, there he stands with his friends in a great silence and a great space. You know, when we think about this gospel reading today, we think, what is Jesus doing? Is it possible that Jesus has sinned? I mean, here he, he went in, he went into the temple angry, and he did all this stuff, you know, he, he drove out the merchants, he drove out the cattle and, and all the animals that were there. Well, let's think about what the temple is. The temple is a great structure. They say that the inside of the temple covers about 35 acres of land. There's a courtyard and there's an enclosed area and there's the temple uh, proper itself. All this area, and it is a sacred area. We hear that Jesus says that this is supposed to be my father's house of prayer. And he goes in there and he finds all this merchandise going on. Well, let's get back to this bit on what Lynn is, a solemn, you know, time to think about our penitence and all this sort of stuff. But really, isn't Lent a time for us to clean out the things in ourselves? that prevent us from really attaining the spiritual connection with God that we should be connecting with, that we should have. You know, is it Lent really a time where we might want to act just a little bit crazy? We might want to clean house? That's what Jesus is really doing here in the gospel today. He's cleaning house. You see, these, these merchants were there 
you know, this, this is Passover. This is a time where Jerusalem that normally has about 50,000 occupants in it has swelled more, almost four times. There's 180 plus thousand people there for the Passover. You know, that's like taking any of these little communities like Delhi or anything else and having some major event go on. It made me think of Waddington where Tammy and I are from. We, we hold the Bass Masters Elite Series on the St. Lawrence River every, every August. And that little town of 900 people, we have about typically 10,000 people crammed into the village and as on, on television for the weighing ceremonies, the weighing, the weighing um, events of the fish, uh, the day at the end of the fishing day. We were on ESPN Live and all that sort of stuff. And they were astonished by this little village having 10,000 people in it to celebrate this event. But when something like that happens, the identity of the village sometimes, at least temporarily, changes, doesn't it? There's such a great change. There's such a great need. People need to have food. They need to eat. They need to have a place to stay. And that happened in Jerusalem as well. So these merchants may have been doing somewhat of a service. The money had to be exchanged from all the different currencies in the region where people traveled for the Passover to be converted into the coinage that they would accept at the temple for the temple tax. The people needed animals for sacrifices. So they needed food to eat. So these merchants might have been providing a service, but there was places to do that other than within the temple. And when the people came into the temple area, it should have been for a more spiritual connection with God. A time to really think of the things that were separating them from God and get reconnected with God. And when Jesus entered the temple courtyard, he was furious. He was angry because the merchants were changing the whole identity of that area from a spiritual place to connect with God to a place of business. He's basically saying there's places that is proper to do business, but there's also places that's proper for spirituality, and you shouldn't be mixing the two. And he pushed the merchants and the animals out of the temple area. And people say, well, it might have been just a little undignified for Jesus acting that way. He's usually this gentle kind of meat person, meat person, right? Well, there's a story of a... Um, of a bank robbery that happened in California one time. And the, the person that was gonna rob the bank had a motorcycle helmet on. He came into the bank and he slid a handwritten note under the teller to, to a woman that was the teller on, behind the counter. And this teller was a lady in her fifties. She looked like kind of a nice meek lady, you know, someone that would probably be an easy target. So he picked her and gave her the note. And it said, give me all your money or, or it's your life. He had a gun. Well, the teller reached for the cash drawer. And she glanced at the note that the robber had given her again. And instead of handing the cash drawer over, she immediately starts to whack him on the head with it. He, she beats him over and over on the head and said, shame, shame, shame on you. And, and the robber was so stunned, finally runs out of the bank and he hides in the shrubs outside and the police catch him. And the police come in and ask this lady, they go, what possessed you to do what you did? At first you were ready to give him the cash and then you attacked him. She said, well, when I glanced at that note again, I seen he had wrote down a really naughty word and that just <laughs> made me mad. She was angry. It drove her to action. You see, this is what happened with Jesus in the marketplace today, in, the, in today's gospel reading. He was angry. He was driven to action because something needed to change. The people were not getting what they were coming to the temple for, a time of worship, a time of connection with God. Instead, they were spending money and they were exchanging money and they were buying things. And it was kind of a carnival atmosphere instead of a spiritual atmosphere. And you know, a lot of people think, well, 
you know, this anger, you know, Jesus is all about love. Anger and love don't go together. But sometimes it's a real good companion, one or another. Because, again, anger can drive us into action. And when I was thinking about this, I remember years ago when my daughter was um, starting to march in the high school marching band. She didn't play an instrument because she loved color guard, the flags and the front lines and all that sort of stuff. And she decided to try out one year. And this was at the beginning of the season. She tried out and the band director had her coming to practices, you know, three and four times a week, week after week. And then the season is about to begin. And my daughter comes to me and she's all upset and she's about in tears and she goes, I'm not going to march. I go, what do you mean you're not going to march? You've been doing great. They said you were doing good in the color. And she goes, well, some of the seniors in the band that play an instrument decided they wanted to be in color guards as so the music director is going to let them take our places. I said, that's not fair. She goes, well, that's what he told me. Well, something snapped in me. I guess it was that love for my daughter. And I'm usually not one that confronts people. I'm usually not one that yells at people unless something, you know, snaps. Well, I went to the music director who happened to be our neighbor from across the street as well. But we were at the school in the, in the back uh, near the football field where they rehearsed. And I went to him, I said, what is going on? What do you mean you're not letting my daughter march? Well, the seniors, a couple of the late girls that played the, the trumpet decided they didn't want to play trumpet. They wanted to be in color guard, so I'm letting them do it. I says, after you've had her practice week after week after week and is doing a good job and you've told her she's doing good, you're not going to let her march. That's not right. And I was, my voice had kind of got raised. I was kind of yelling. And Stacy told me afterwards that all the kids were walking way around the music director <laughs> and me because they didn't know what was going on. And, and, you know, of course, I, I had to say in there, I had some experience. I said, when I marched, when I was a kid, <laughs> I said, the band director didn't let the people that played an instrument take a spot from somebody in the color guard just because they decided they didn't want to play their instrument. He would basically tell them, if you're going to march, you're going to march with your instrument. I said, I think that's what you need to do. Well, we had a back and forth thing. But finally, Stacy, my daughter, marched that season. You see... I was out of love and, and out of a, a, a bit of anger, I confronted him. Now, we've got to not always go overboard, though. And, and Jesus really didn't go overboard. He didn't really hurt anybody. He kind of disrupted things a little bit. And I'm sure the people in the temple kind of walked way around where he was because they didn't want to be where he was overturning the tables and everything as well. But he was really doing it out of love for the people that were there because they needed that time with God. They didn't need to be distracted by all the activities going on in these merchant areas. You see, and we're called not only to be solemn during Lent and think about what separates us from God, but we're called somewhat to act just a little bit crazy. What did we hear in the second reading today? That the cross seems foolish to the world, right? But to those who know the saving power of the cross through Christ, it is all about what our salvation is. So we need to be a little crazy because, you know, let's think about it. During Lent, we're really celebrating or, or mem memorializing, remembering what happened to Jesus. We're remembering that he is on a journey to the, cr the cross. He's going to have a criminal conviction. He's going to be hung on a cross to die for you and I. That's kind of crazy holidays, isn't it? <laughs> it's not what we typically think of as holidays. So we need to act just a little crazy. We need to do, we need to be spurred to action out of love for God to spread his word in the world. You know, but don't go overboard. There's a temple in India that people go to worship at and along the path that goes to the temple, there happens to be a poisonous snake that lives on the path. And whenever the monks or anyone else would travel up this path to go and worship in the temple, the snake would jump out and bite them. Poisonous snake bites everybody. Well, this wasn't a real good thing. And one day a Swami was going up the path 
to go worship in the temple. And the snake jumped out to bite him. But before he could bite him, the Swami puts a trance on him. And he says to the snake, from now on, you cannot bite anybody going up this path. It's not right for you to bite them with your poison and, and make them sick or kill them. That's not appropriate. From now on, you cannot bite people. He goes up to the temple, he worships, and he goes away. About a, a few months later, he goes back to the temple to worship. And he notices the snake in the ditch along the side of the path, all beaten up and cut and in terrible shape. And the Swami, Swami says to the snake, my friend, what happened to you? And the snake said, well, ever since you put that trance on me and told me that I can't bite people, I haven't been able to defend myself. Look at the condition I'm in. And the Swami says, you foolish snake. I told you you couldn't bite people, but I didn't tell you you couldn't still hiss at them. Okay, so, so we have to remember, we don't need to bite people, but we need to do a little hissing for the kingdom of God. We need to act just a little crazy and be willing to stand up and love for God and his people to support them and to help them when time comes where they need help. We need to, you know, be there for them and we need to help them get what they need. Jesus in the temple needed to clear out the merchants so people could have a spiritual experience. We need to make sure that people can come to our house, of this house of worship that is God's, and they can get a spiritual connection with God. They can feel part of God's kingdom, not be distracted by the, the other things around us. And we have a good place here. We have a good place for people to feel connected. But we need to be willing when people don't have that sort of a place to be able to act just a little crazy, do a little bit of hissing for the kingdom of God and help people know that they can have a place to worship and be connected with God. We need to stand up for one another. We need to stand up for the word of God and what he wants people to know and hear. We need to stand up for his love for all of us. So let's remember, in Lent and any other time during the year, it's okay to do just a little bit of hissing. Amen. Let us now stand and declare our faith by reciting together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer to the people. Gather in God's house and 
Let us offer our prayers to God who embraces us with steadfast love, saying, For your mercy is great. For the church, and especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Daniel, our bishop, that we may faithfully proclaim Christ crucified and lead others into the mystery of God's love. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. For this parish family, that in this Lenten time we may grow in our awareness of our dignity as temples of the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. For Joseph, our president, and Andrew, our governor, for an end to violence and injustice, that God will heal the brokenness in our society, that he value human life and inspire leaders to work toward protecting the innocent and vulnerable from harm. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. For a deepening of prayer in our lives, that we may find ways to make room for God and deepen our dedication to the words God has spoken. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. For those recovering from winter storms, the homeless, the hungry, and the unemployed, and all those sickened by the coronavirus, that they may see the power of God in the hands of those who come to their aid. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. For those in you in our prayers, remembering especially those who are sick and others who have asked for prayers, Christian, Kabir, Mary, Bobby, Melinda, Barbara, Alma, Minnie, Connor, Kendra, Melanie, Kathy, Joe, Isabella, Bill, Teresa, Richard, Christine, Carol, Ian, Bob, Katie, Herb, Victoria, Wayne, Rob, Ray, Rick, Cheryl, Ty, Mark, Glenn, Mark, Betty, Joseph, Austin, Ben, Sarah, Joan, Elise, and the Delhi Senior Housing Community. Those in the armed services, Lynn, Sean, Connor, those away from home, Josh, Anthony, Kristen, Heidi, and Jesse, those who mourn, the Baker family. In our parish, we pray for Linda and Vic Ivano, Valerie and Rick Lunsford. We ask God to bless the children of our parish. Please pray that we may reach unchurched people. Please pray for St. John's ministry to people in recovery from addiction. And we thank you, Father, for all the gifts you have so generously given us. We pray that we may use them for the building up of your church. That they find strength in the arms of Christ, embracing them from the cross. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. For those who have died, remembering especially mm -hmm. Rogers, that he may be raised up from death to eternal joy with Christ. Hear us, O God. For your mercy is great. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary and God bearer and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, Lord. Let us now pray together that diocesan prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for this, your diocese of Albany inspire and sustain us in this time of transition incline our hearts to do your will and so direct us in your ways that the leader you are raising up to be our bishop will find here joyful disciples making disciples united in faith unflagging in hope and steeped in mutual charity in your mercy accept our repentance and grant us peace. Look with patience on our enthusiasms and pour rich gifts and grace upon all who are entrusted with the ongoing work of your church, so that with diligence and charity, we may discern correctly and walk righteously in your way, that we, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy is your name, O God, incline our hearts to keep your commandments and hear the prayers we offer this day. In this Lenten time, may we open ourselves to the gift of your spirit and become living temples of your love. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters of Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Share with one another the sign of God's peace. Well, I think uh, we've got a couple of announcements we'll do. Uh, first of all, this Tuesday night is our next vestry meeting. That'll be 7 p.m. on Zoom. So all vestry members, please uh, put that in your mind to try to remember it. Uh, I'll send a reminder out with the link just so we have a, a fresh email with it. But uh, that'll be Tuesday night at 7. Um, today is personal items uh, day, care items again. If you didn't bring them in today, if you get them here the next day or two, we'll get them up to the uh, food pantry. Um, I think that's it for announcements, but I do think we have a couple of birthdays today. Jesse, I think uh, is today your 18th birthday, is it? Yeah, go come on up. And, and Nancy, it's your birthday? Yours is a couple of days. Yep, that's right. So, so let's pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as they increase. Bless and guide them whenever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Confirm them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart, may they peace which passes understanding. Abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and for the remainder of the year and always, especially in your 18th year, you're going to need his blessing, right? <laughs> there you go. All right. And the blessing of God Almighty be upon you, Nancy, this day and always. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Today is also um, Girl Scout uh, Sunday, so that's why uh, Jill and, and Jessica did the Jesse did the readings for us today. And uh, you know, just uh, Girl Scouting is a great organization, so uh, I'm glad to see you here to represent them today. And anybody that was ever in Girl Scouts, you could probably share some stories with them. You know, there's probably some some good adventure stories that you may have. All right, Polly has a yeah. Answer. I have put the sign up list out for Easter baskets. Uh, we're only doing four here at two in Hilbert, so I hope that everybody will sign up to bring something in. The investor will take care of buying the hand. So please help me out. Thank you. I also put a, a picture out there to put information uh, for Wilma uh, Baker's address and stuff, phone number if you want to get her car, send her car, the car, you know, about Roger. Okay. In that vein, um, I thought that uh, we might consider making a donation to the small church that they were instrumental in starting out there in friendship. So in the next uh, couple of weeks, if you just, um, you can you can put a portion of money in your check and note it so that Brenda knows what's going on, or you can just bring some cash and I would be happy to take that from you. Well, you can give it to Brenda. Okay. You know, they were very instrumental in getting a small church that had been empty, getting it started again so that it's being used on a regular basis. I think on a Saturday afternoon, I think it was a seventh day Baptist church, which is how Rogers grew up. Mm. All right. Anything else? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy, sin hath, thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church 
may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart, by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us now pray, pray our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you and my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.